Back in 2018, when MG Philippines unveiled their product lineup, they only had but one sedan in the mix. Come 2019, they dropped a bombshell of a car in the form of this, the MG5. Poised to take on the subcompact category with something pretty big. Now, here's the thing. When you think of MG, you tend to think of another brand that starts with letter M. Mm -hmm. Deja vu, perhaps? Well, we are in the same venue. Now, the front clip may look familiar to a lot of people, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not. It looks good. It looks smart. It looks sharp. And I feel as if that MG designed it with a wider audience in mind, rather than the daring designed subcompacts in this particular category. Now, taking center stage is an imposing chrome front grille, reminiscent of European cars. Now, down below is this sort of multi-layered design on the space where you'd find fog lamps on other cars. Unfortunately, none here. Now, speaking of lights, the MG5 has DRLs and projector boom LEDs. Now, under the hood sits a four-cylinder, 1.5-liter, naturally aspirated engine that produces 112 horses and 150 newton meters of torque. Now, the car has actually been with Jack longer than it takes some people to go around the world in a hot air balloon. That's a really long time. But in terms of economical figures, we were able to get that before the lockdown. So in the city, in hellish Metro Manila traffic, you get about 7 kilometers to the liter. And on the highway, you get 17. Now this bump on the hood, I feel, really accentuates the line that runs across the entire side of the MG. And it looks very good. It, look, it makes it look very, very smooth. The two creases found down below, here and here, add a little bit of flair to its stance. And I do truly like it. Now all around, you've got 16s with ventilated discs up front, solid discs at the rear. Those 16s are wrapped in 20555s. You've got 118 millimeters of ground clearance and repeaters on the side mirror. Oh, uh, but before we go, Note this window right here. Yeah, just remember that, and we'll get back to it a little bit later. Now at the rear, you've got a chrome accent that stretches from one end to the other, splitting the rear taillights in a very nice fashion. Oh, worth mentioning too, at least at the rear, you've got a fog lamp, a working fog lamp. Up front, you don't have any, but at least, hey, at the rear, you've got one. Open her up, and you are looking at space for enough groceries for two months. That's tested, by the way. That comes to a total of 512 liters. Now, that may seem like a lot, and you can put the backrest down for even more space, but the opening is not necessarily the biggest thing on the planet. So loading larger items, yeah, that might be a problem. Now in the back, you're greeted by plush and very soft leather seats with a little bit of bolstering. It's actually quite nice. I do like the way it feels to the touch. It's actually quite premium, I should say. Now I've got enough leg room and headroom back here, even with Jack's normal driving position in front of me and the man is six foot plus. So really space is not that bad for maybe two average size adults. A third might be a problem because the tunnel is just a little bit high. Now for the passengers, it might get a little bit warm because there are no air vents back here. Uh, there is no center armrest or cup holders either, just two ball holders that are slanted on the door. But at the very least, you do have two charging points in the form of USBs. Now, there is one other thing that I wanted to point out. Remember when I said, take a look at this window from the outside? Check it out. See what they've done? They've David Blamed it. It's gone. Now up front is really where the MG5 excels. Let's start with the seats. Like the rear, these are plush and comfortable. I like them a lot. Good to the touch and bolstered very well too. Another thing is that they are powered, both of them. You've got six way for the driver and four for the passenger. Oh, and one more thing, although it is made for a different market, these are actually heated seats. Not exactly the best thing to do to turn them on in Manila heat, because if you do, well, that would be like eating a bowl of chili sitting on a stove next to the devil himself. <laughs> Not good. Up front, you have a pair of analog gauges flanking a digital screen showing various information such as tire pressure, range, and the trip computer as well. Moving on to the infotainment system, you are going to love it because MG has put a massive 10-inch screen that is crisp, clear, 
and really, really, really easy to use. However, we are kind of bummed out because it also has the controls for the air and you can only manipulate it with one button. This one button controls the wind level, the temperature level, and at the same time also the audio level of the radio. So you have to kind of fizz through that to be able to get to what you want. And it's kind of a bummer that there is no dedicated uh, lever or button for the air. But it does have one thing that the other competitors in this segment does not have, which is a 360 degree camera. Well done, MG. Very good. Very good. Oh, wait. Or in this case, Earl. Hun Hao. She, she. Do check out Earl's review on our website of the MG5 Style, which is a more affordable variant of this particular model, and it goes for under 900,000 Philippine pesos. Before we do get rolling, do please like and subscribe our video channel because we love creating these videos just for you. The MG5 Alpha comes equipped with six airbags, ABS with EBD, with brake assist and corner braking control, electronic stability control, a tire pressure monitoring system, child lock and isofix tethers. God, I missed saying that! Now when you're driving the MG5, it's really not that much different from your Japanese or Korean car. Sayak Motors have really done a fantastic job on this car. And really, the chassis isn't intruded much by road noise, potholes, or divots. It drives actually pretty darn well. And the steering, thanks to the selectable modes, you can adjust it your way. Kind of like Burger King. No endorsement though. Now when you're on the highway, it's really not a problem. Getting going, not a problem whatsoever. It's traffic that can be an issue. See, the transmission, eh, it likes to have a conversation just before it gets going. It says too much like, uh, may I go now? Is it okay? Are the lights green? When you just wanna tell it, just go, dude, just go. So there is that little bit of lag. It's really the premium feel up front. It's really a great place to be. MG has done a great job on this 5. Now, considering its price point, yes, you do still have hard plastics all around the car, but it is definitely offset with the number of soft points inside, like your center armrest, the little bits on the dash, the steering wheel. It all feels great to the touch, and it's a great place to be, you know? It's comfortable. I like it. I do. Very much so. I can't stress this enough. But MG, yeah, they've got something special here with this sedan. It's loaded with so many things that are useful on the road. And instead of upping the competition with just its price point, MG figured they'd send a Jaeger to destroy the competition. Have you seen the commercial? The new MG5, with room and features you wouldn't expect from a subcompact sedan. The MG5 Alpha is available at 938,888 Philippine pesos. Great value for a car under a million pesos. Consider this too, that the lineup starts at just a little over 650,000 Philippine pesos. So either the base variant or the top of the line model, that's pretty good value. <laughs>